Hello everybody, and welcome to another game of StarCraft II. I'm your host, Big Blue Firebat, and today we are going to have Complexity's Druby spawning here as the Blue Terran. He is a Canadian player known for his excellent Terran Micro, and in particular his Druby drops of multitasking, multiple medevacs full of Marines and Marauders all over the map with against his opponents, frustrating them and winning the game, doing lots of damage. And his opponent is going to be Evil Geniuses in control. This guy is an American player. He is a beast. He is a former Brood War player, a former Zerg Brood War player who has transitioned from the Star into the StarCraft beta, into Protoss play, and he has been showing himself very well. He does a lot of training, he does a lot of uh, casting, he does a lot of excellent play, and we're going to see a great, great game between these two players, I think, as they are both pro-level players, they are both excellent players, and they are going to be spawning on MLG, MLG's version of Shakur's Plateau. The only real difference between regular ladder version and this version is this little neutral supply depot here that prevents Zerg players from getting walled off at the bottom of their ramp. Probably not going to play home a lot of a role in this game, so we're just going to see uh, not a whole lot of unusual map positioning stuff here. It's just going to be a straight up game, very similar to a ladder game, and we're going to see how they uh, end up playing things out. In control, right off the bat, sending his pro up to scout his um, opponent's one of two potential spawning positions. One of the quirks of Shakura's Plateau is that even the ladder version is uh, you, d you are disallowed spawning at the close walking position of your opponent, which means that In Control realizes his uh, opponent, Drewby, cannot spawn up here he has to spawn either here or here, and already um, in control is going to be going for a gas steal against Druby. This allow this basically disallows Druby to go certain builds that require a lot of gas, limiting the number of potential builds that in control has to plan for and deal with. I would say this is a um, a slightly non-typical response for Protoss against Terran play, but it's is very um, solid play. It really just allows in control to do exactly what he wants without having to worry about uh, very quick Banshees, very quick uh, Blue Flame Hellions, anything like that. And more importantly, he's going to be aware of the timing of the second gas from Juby because of this uh, scouting assimilator. And we see a probe getting sniped down by that SCV. A uh, good little kill for the SCV, the Marine assisted, but the SCV did the trick. And now uh, In Control is going to have some idea of, as when Druby takes his second gas. And Druby, for his part, is just going to be scouting around In Control's base. He's seeing a very standard opening for Protoss players, getting the uh, skipping the initial Zealot, going right for a Stalker. Uh, most of the time, the Zealot is actually more of a liability against Terran, because if a Terran player were to very quickly research concussive shells for Marauders, pushing with a couple of Marauders, a couple of Marines, the Zealot is actually unable to get anywhere near that army. It can be kited forever. A Stalker, on the other hand, can do a decent amount of damage and perhaps hold off a push like that. More importantly, a Stalker will be able to chase out an SCV right away. And we see this SCV forced to run, run out of here. And it looks like In Control was planning to expand, but um, instead, was going to deceive his opponent in case that SCV made it down the ramp, but he's going to go and expand anyway. Druby, for his part, is already halfway through on building his own command center, so both players are looking to set themselves up into a fairly solid macro position. They want to get on two bases as quickly as possible so that they can pursue the higher levels of tech, increase their um, army potential, and really just get going. And now we have In Control, aware of the fact that the assimilator is down. Druby has not taken his second gas yet, so in control is going to be playing kind of in the dark. He is taking his own second gas and is getting his warp gate research going down, getting a, a couple of sentries up and out in order to set up those force fields and poking up the ramp with the stalker. Ramp is fully walled off, but a couple of pokes are going to get off on that marine. The stalker taking a little bit of shield damage, taking a little more shield damage, and looks like it's going to retreat before taking any hull damage. Very smart play, great control by in control, definitely uh, demonstrating his own name. Um, a good strategy with Protoss units, particularly these early harassing units, is get in there, do a little bit of damage to these marines which cannot regenerate hit points, take a little bit of shield damage, get out of combat, regenerate those shields, go back in, and if you play it right, you, you will not take any hull damage whatsoever while you eventually do a decent amount of damage, killing some marines in the process. But there's a bunker at the top of this ramp. This, <clears throat> If uh, this stalker were to poke back up there, he is not going to be able to do much damage at all and potentially get killed. And we actually see um, the SCV is going to be scouting around, seeing what we got down here. It looks like he's going to spot the uh, Stalker and retreat right away. And uh, In Control is aware of what's going on at the ramp for Druby. And now these Marines moving out, doing enough damage to that Stalker to push it out of here. And um, it looks like Druby is going to be taking control of his bottom part of this ramp. 
right before he expands. He has his orbital command up and running. I expect he's going to float that over very soon. In control for his part is actually um, sacrificing a significant amount of his army in order to go for economy and production. With two sentries and one stalker, he's actually, uh, he could be vulnerable to a move out by Druby, but Druby is unaware of the fact that there is very little army over here, and by the time um, he moved out, in control would have been able to reinforce with his warp gates. He is not he's gonna have a couple sen um, zealots out destroying this neutral supply depot in order to be able to place uh, pylons here if necessary. And just with the stalker hanging out on the edge of the ramp, be being able to spot any moves out. And this poor SCV getting taken down completely now. <clears throat> a little bit of damage from before, and it was just unable to scout out and see what's going on. And I expect that this SCV is going to be scouting out, looking for proxy pylons. Notice those uh, waypoints all over the place, ending on the Zelenaga Watchtower. He wants to make sure that there is no trickery going down from in control. Proxy pylons placed up in this area are a great strategy for Protoss players in order to have an advanced point to warp in. <clears throat> but Druby is aware of it, scouting all of the common spots for a proxy pylon to go. And now we have a, uh, a bit of a move out by Druby. It looks like he's going to uh, send himself out. He does not have concussive shell research. He's skipping that research for the moment, going instead for stim pack and combat shields. And those are going to finish about when he would arrive at the um, <clears throat> at In Control's base. In Control, for his part, setting up his... Um, Units in a great concave. All of the stalkers and sentries would be able to attack at a very focused point as each unit comes up. You will see demonstrated with this SCV. That SCV gets un utterly annihilated, and that concave is very powerful, and we're going to have to see some good force fields from in control. If Druby decides to push up this ramp, he has a decent force, and it looks like Stim and Combat Shield just finished. This is the time to push in, but no, the force fields are going to be able to push him away, and this force field placement is very intentional. He's leaving this gap for a particular reason. He wants those Marines and Marauders to funnel through that little choke point in order to get annihilated by this concave one or two at a time, and there's enough, there are enough sentries with enough energy in order to create tons of force fields, so Druby realizes that he is not going to be able to push in successfully. And now we even have a probe in here not placing down a pylon, interestingly. He was about to place it down and decided to cancel it. I'm not sure if that was a mistake or not, but he's going to lose this pylon for sure. But in the meantime, we have a warp prism coming out, zealot legs being produced by in control, it looks like, and also a dark shrine coming out. So we're going to see some dark templar play, some harassment, and between the warp prism and the dark templar, I think that we're going to see some interesting drops, warps, warp ins, and other shenanigans going down for our Protoss player. And we also have another nice placement here. This observer here sitting right at the front of the ramp is going to be aware of the unit composition of um, Druby as he moves out. And he will also be able to just spot, he'll be able to sneak into um, Druby's base and spot any tech if he wants to. But now we have this observer it's placed in this position. Very specifically, he's able to spot the high ground, as you can see here, allowing this pylon to warp in probably Dark Templar to the top here. I don't think that in control is going to be doing anything else, considering his tech path. And now we even have one on the uh, side here going for these destructible rocks. Interesting. He wants these rocks down in order to warp in on the low ground here and just run over to this area and maybe attack a, an expansion or run all the way in. And now we already have a Dark Templar in the base of Druby, foreign control, forcing the SCVs to run over to this missile turret, forcing all these Marines and Marauders to run back and finally deal with this poor Dark Templar that gets taken down but did a little bit of damage, killing a ton of workers, killing 20 workers already. So we got another drop of Dark Templar up here with the War Prisms, and this has been extremely effective Dark Templar play, four in control, doing a ton of damage, putting him in a great spot, and this Dark Templar is, these Dark Templar are not going to get away, but they have gone in there, they have done what they needed to do, and now we have another DT warping in to this section of the base, going for more SCVs, actually attacking the Marauders, and not quite sure I agree with that, That would have. that's probably a bit of a miss micro, four in control, should have targeted those SCVs, done a little bit more damage, but using this time to set up his third base, move himself into position, and he is in a great position right now, even with a warp prison with a couple of Dark Templars, a couple of Zealots, hanging out inside, allowing them to move and drop in, and we'll see what he's able to do with that. It looks like Druby's a bit on the back foot, he is going to have to move out and do some damage, or at least take his third in order to catch back up. We have in control moving into his own third. He's going to be beating his uh, beating Druby in the economy game. He has 62 harvesters to Druby's 29. That puts him at an enormous advantage, almost doubling the income, more than doubling the income of Druby. 
is going to allow him to field more army and reinforce his army much more quickly. And this is going to be... Um, Drewby's going to have to go out and make something happen. He has got to be very cost-effective with his units. He has got the plus one going for his um, Marines and Marauders. And a nice... Uh, uh, we have the factory in here scouting out these Archons, so he's aware of the fact that the Dark Templar have turned into Archon. But there's plus two armor set up for in control which is going to um, put the advantage in the upgrades in in control's favor negating that plus one so and then we have plus two attack for drewby coming down but it's going to take a while before it's done now we have a dark temple in the background pushing in from drewby and it looks like the four fields are set up perfectly in order to allow these marines and marauders to funnel in just barely and get destroyed by these archon sentries and stalkers and drewby is forced to fall back with a dark templar harassing his um Bio ball. This is no fun for these Marines, for these Marauders. Luckily, they are slightly faster, or just as fast as the Dark Templar. But now that Stim is wearing off, they are a little bit slower. The Dark Templar is going to be catching up and sniping down these Marines. Every Marine counts in a position like this, particularly because of the fact that Drooby is down so far in Harvesters. He has got to get going. He's got to get some of his Drooby drops going. He's got to be dropping on his opponent's base, kill some Harvesters, kill some probes. Claws way back into this game because he is definitely on the back foot now. He is at a serious disadvantage. 72 harvesters to 32, three bases to two, huge saturation, and the income is enormous. Income advantage, uh, double the gas, double the minerals. Um, in control is firmly in control of this game. He knows what he's going to be doing. He knows how he's going to be doing it. And Drewby has got to get something accomplished here. And now we see it. He's moving with his drops. Receive is going to get spotted. Not spotted by that observer. It looks like that um, medevac was able to sneak just past that observer, and there um, we have in control, expecting a drop, but he's not quite sure where the medevac is. At the same time, we have another medevac moving across the map, and we're going to see how effective Drewby is going to be with these drops. We have more probes scouting around. Observer sitting at the front of the base. Um, looks like in control is planning to take his fourth, but now we have the drop going down here for Drewby. And I will keep an eye on that other drop in the upper section of the map, but I want to see what goes on here. Looks like we're going to be stimming up and moving in, and it looks like Andrewby has got to do some damage to these workers, killing a ton of probes. The army for in control is out of position, moving back here, finally going to be able to do some damage, and it looks like all these marines are going to get away with no damage, well, a little bit of damage to them, none of them dying. Medivac taking a few shots from the stalkers. Now we have a drop of marauders, going to be denying this fourth base. This is exactly what I was talking about. Drewby needs to get back into this game, he needs to do some damage, he needs to deny expansions while taking one of his own, and it looks like these uh, marauders are going to be uh, forced to fall away with the Zealot and Dark Templar doing some damage to it, and it looks like in control has had enough of those drops. He is not interested in things going down here. We have another drop coming down and an engagement in the center, actually going on all over this map, and it looks like Drewby is forced to fall back away from this stalker, this stalker Colossus um, and Zealot force, doing great starter step micro. Moving and stopping, moving and stopping, killing those zealous as they come. Archon getting a couple of hits of splash damage, and it looks like he's going to be falling all the way back to his base, where the ghosts and bunkers and towers are going to be able to re are going to be able to uh, hold this position right here. And it looks like In Control is just holding on to the center of the map, but at the same time we have a, the drop coming in from Drewby. In Control's army is way out of position, doing tons of damage, forced to warp in a Dark Templar. Dark Templar one hitting those marines and it looks like all the probes are falling back and i think that this drop is going to do some damage but not a ton it looks like um in control drooby was able to even up the worker kill count but not quite even up the game considering in control is sitting at his third base still with drooby on two bases this is not working out so well for him the incomes while they are more equalized are a little bit um in are definitely in in control's favor considering drooby is nearly mined out here he is able to keep his um income similar by the use of mules, but those mules are not going to last, and these resources are not going to last down to 200 resources here, 130 on, on that patch, and I think that um, Drewby has to expand now or else he is going to simply lose this game via a loss of army. He won't be able to resupply his army as quickly as he needs to. And now we have um, in control. Maybe looking to take his fifth base, but he's definitely taking his fourth base. He wants to stay up on the Harvester County. He wants to stay up on the economy. And uh, Drewby is worried about drops. He is worried about pylons. He wants to keep this. Uh, he wants to keep his. He wants to be aware of any drops that come in using this sensor tower to keep things uh, under control, to keep an eye out for things. But now we have these ghosts, tons of ghosts with lots of energy. It looks like there are four ghosts with this army, and that can definitely change the tide of any battle i see uh, in control going for templar archives probably to counter those ghosts probably to counter this mass of marines 
The Colossus will do a lot of damage, but with all those ghosts in there, destroying shields, destroying energy from sentries, revealing Dark Templar, I think that uh, Druby has an excellent chance of bringing himself back in this game, despite being down so far. We're going to see what happens. In Control is completely maxed out now with his army. He's um, almost certainly going to be moving 